Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Just a recent finds video again, um, like I did with the last ones of course. Uh, obviously we're in lockdown now, again. I've also got a few things as well that I bought maybe a couple weeks ago just before lockdown as well, so I might be willing to show you what they are. So let's not be around the bush. So we've got Shallow Grave and Sexy Beast. Uh, these are probably the first Blu-rays I actually ever bought. I got these from Morrison's, they were selling for about two for a pound. They were. These are the Film 4 reissue ones, these are. I think these come out, when did these come out? Just last year actually. And these are my first ones ever. Of course, going from my local Morrison's, which is quite fun, funny, and these it's going for like eight pounds, less than 10 pounds really, so why not? Shallow Grave I've done a review of in my reviews back in series two, I think. So I've always shown thoughts on that one. Of course, it's a great film. My mum watched it recently with me and she thought she wanted to see what it was like. She thought it was weird and boring. On the other hand, we've got Sexy Beast. This hasn't been opened yet, actually, so I need still need to watch it. It's meant to be a great film. It's got Ray Winston and Ben Kingsley and Amanda Redman as well. And I've got two more. So this one comes from Lancaster, my local HMV, and I just thought, interestingly. The next one is uh, Doom Asylum. So this is an Arrow video release. Um, Arrow have done many, re been re reissuing films, left, right and centre. Lots of horror as well. Well, mainly horror films, really, from... You can name it for 60s, 70s, mainly from the 80s, but even the 90s as well. You know, they've done a loads of these. There's tons of these. You know, you go to HMV, there's stock full of them. They are. It's actually really good. The, the, the picture quality in this is, fab is fantastic because they took the original notice of the film, of course, and just really just gone whole hog with the picture quality. It's really fantastic. You can see it's a low-budget film. It stands out beautifully. Special features as well. There are some really good special features on this as on this as as good. You know, good interesting off the uh, production as well. So that's so this comes with a crystal thing, of course. Brilliant artwork of Mitch and also Kirsten Davis as well. Again, trying to get a, again a face sawn off. But you have a reversible cover of the original poster artwork as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, obviously, it releases from Arrow as well. So that is good. I mean, that's the thing with Arrow. They have, always have reversible covers, they do. So that's pretty interesting. And the last one to talk about is just a recent eBay I got a couple of days ago, actually, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, and this is Extra. This is... I talked about Extra on Series 9, I did. So if you want to see the thoughts on that film, it's like... Yeah. So this is from Second Sight Films, this is. Um, this came out... I'm trying to think what year this came out. 2018. This did, so two years ago. Um... Great film, um, in a black case this time. Um, picture quality is meant to be, actually meant to be really good on this one, of course. Um, just around the back here, of course, you can't really see it. There's a reversible cover. I think it's on the original poster as well. Like, if, I can't really bring it out, really, but there's like original, um, original poster, of course. That's sort of like the video release of it, actually. I think in the UK, we had some, they had something like that and it did, of course. So you've got the film, of course, but you've also got a load of special features on this thing. This is packed full of special features. You have the new restoration, of course. You've got a new director's version as well, a 2018 director's version, which is which might be interesting. Exploring Extra, which is a new 50, 50 well, like, a near, like, a near, like an hour-long documentary. Interviews with the director, of course, one of the main cast leads, and a few bits and pieces, of course. You've got the World of Extra, a new featurette. As well, you got Beyond Extra, which is apparently to be, I think it's to do with like a new film that uh, the director Harry Bromley Davenport was actually doing. I think at the time actually all getting off the ground really, so it explains bits and pieces like that and a few tests and some footage as well from this new extra. He's actually trying to work on like a fourth one. So uh, Extra Exposed, which is an archive interview, which is um, on YouTube actually. I think that's from two thousand five. That is, um, it's on YouTube still. I think. I think it is actually, uh, so you can go and you can probably watch that. It's just with Darren Paul just being interviewed in his apartment, whatever, and just talking about the three films he's been doing the production, and it feels the highs and lows of his filmmaking career. Uh, Love and the Alien, tribute to Philip Say, who's one of the main leads in the film, of course, one of the main sort of antagonists, really. Exclusive Brian made music tribute, I'm not too sure what, which one it is, if it's the, the composer who did the Mad Max films or Brian made from Queen, I have no idea. 
English subtitles and everything else. So you got so you got quite a few documentary stuff and you know bits and pieces on here. So it's worth getting actually. First of all, is Doctor Who. This is Fury from the Deep, uh, the re the recently re uh, animated um, story, Patrick Charlton from season series uh, season five. Um, of course, the penultimate story for season, uh, season five. Um, haven't watched it actually. Um, I've all, I basically just. I think what I just done is took it off and basically just, you know, reversed the cover on it. Really. So there we go. And the next one I've got is um, this has come from a um, a website called Town Town Travel TV. So this is not from eBay or from or a store. Well, it's from a store, but it's from an online store. This is and it is the Myth Makers. This is Virgin Publishing Doctor Who books or Virgin Publishing. Yeah, so this is a myth uh, done by real time. This is a Myth Makers document documentary segment really. Oh just stand alone really. Um if anyone doesn't if anyone doesn't know what Myth Makers was, during the wilderness years, well during the eighties of course and during the wilderness wilderness years, the uh, real time pictures made these documentary series focus on either well basically on a actor, of course, who appeared in Doctor Who, sometimes or maybe sometimes in Blake Seven or anything like that. Um and they focus on you know, their sort of rise, how they get involved in Doctor Who, or what did they do afterwards once they left Who and everything else. So it's like interesting, you know, they, there's, there's loads, they've done tons of these, they have, you know. And I was quite surprised that they actually did this. This came out in 2015, this did, so about five years ago. And obviously I'm a fan of Virgin anyway, you know, of what they've been doing in the 90s. And it, so this focuses on, there's too many things on this. Uh, the first thing, of course, is the main interview with Peter Darvel Evans, who was the editor of Virgin of Virgin Books, uh, new interview from 2015, but you also got footage from 1993, which is part of a... Let me find out. Uh, I think it's like like an anniversary thing or a meetup. So this is what Virgin used to do. They used to get all the all first to get to get together, take them to like a bar somewhere in London, and they basically get get a bit get a buffet out, you know. And you just get heavily pissed and everything else, and is drunk, and basically just, and they just all make a ritual like a gang, or something like that, like a, it's like a work party type thing, really. And that's what we used to do back in the day. Uh, the BBC didn't ever ne never did that when they did the EDAs and PDAs, really. So, obviously, just Virgin. I think Virgin splashed out more cash than ever, like what Richard Branson does these days. You know, Virgin, you know, Virgin. I mean, Branson's always taking stuff out his pockets and everywhere, just doing, you know, throwing throwing against the wall, really, that sort of thing. <laughs> What's really interesting, there's a lot of good interviews as well on here as well. You have obviously Peter Darth Evans, complete with mullet as well back in the 90s. You've also got Mark Platt, Paul Cornell, Gary Russell, Gareth Roberts, Andy Lane, Jim Mortimer, Kate Orman, um, Nigel Robinson as well. He's interviewed on this as well. Um, this just came out today actually. I got this in the post this morning, so that's pretty good. Uh, shake it down. By Terence Dix. So this is uh, number forty-five. This is this is from December nineteen eighty-five. Shakedown Terence Dix. It's a it's a new adventure, but it's also a novelization as well of the the what was it the director video real time film Return. Of the, yeah, yeah, Shakedown the Return of the Sontarans from the from nineteen eighty-four. At the beginning, it's a new adventure, of course, with the Doctor, who's who, in this book he's with Bernie Summerfield, Chris Quedge, and Ross Forrester. In this point, at, the, at this point in the chronology of the Virgin New Adventures, you've also got you've in, in also in between you've in between you've got the novelization of Return of the Sontarans. And then the third act, you come back to the New Adventure with um, the Seventh Doctor. Yeah, something like that. You get in, you get in between, but you also got again novelization as well. Says in the back here as well. All the standard information, of course. December 95, Spine as well, great cover by Peter Olsen as well. Obviously utilising what the original the Sontarans looked like in return of the Sontarans, of course. The notes as well for the crew as well, who actually appeared, who did shake down as well, so yeah. Again, Jason Egg Ellery as well does a little introduction as well, interestingly. So my version of the Avengers collection is actually really increasing fame, interestingly, you know, getting all these sort of main ones. It's mainly from 96 and 97, they're going to be a bit hard to do because some they go for high prices that they do now these days. I think stuff like these of course, like the original ones, they can go for various prices really. Just keep a look out and see what is suitable for your price range if you're in, into collecting. Okay, I'll go for this next one next. This is CD. So technically it was my CD at the time for many years ago. 
I'll show it now actually. So this is CBB's the official album. The only reason why this is exists is sort of well is here is because I did help my mum get it for her because she's a manager of a nursery she is. And but she had this for, in the nursery for years, and obviously the the CD was played to death over the years. So she wanted like a new, just another copy really. Uh, the other one was just knackered. It was just like you know, I think it became very unplayable because of its usage. Obviously, this is what she what she did next. Of course, she rather than take it to the to the nursery, of course, to replay it, she burned a copy. Of course, so she made a CD copy of this. It's part of the furniture now, so. It's just here now, so I thought I'd just give a nice little plug in. Um, I remember it back in the day, 2002 this came out, so yeah, yeah, mm, old times. Now, the last two things I'm going to talk about is vinyl, so yeah, so back in the music now, so it's a nice little easy way. First I've got, here's another recent one I've got, and I remember this from childhood, I have the original CD somewhere, it's in the attic somewhere, whatever. Queen Live Magic from 1986, yes. I will do a go disc review of this actually at some point because I want to really address this. It's a live album, it's Queen's second live album, the first one being Live Killers from 1979. This is part of the Magic Tour track listings on the back there. Mm -hmm. Cause I have this on the Mitchell CD. It's actually pretty nice to have it on vinyl because the artwork's actually really good on it. It was also used on the Live in Budapest VHS as well back in the day. Back in the, in the 80s and been reissued since the, in the 90s as well. So yeah, obviously there, that's the stuff there. It's a single disc album this is, so it's not a double. I will address that in the, in, when I do the, the video of it, actually. So yes, because it's worth talking about. There's a nice gatefold of the picture from Nedworth, actually. So I got this from eBay. This is about 15 pounds that this was. Sometimes they kind of go for a bit of a, high, a, bit of a high price, this this album, because it's a bit of a rarity. You don't see much of these in, like, in store, record stores in the wild, really, so it's pretty interesting to get this. Um, so yeah, what have we got? So that's a thank you um, note from the seller. That's actually from a Queen fan store. I didn't actually know that actually. But it's from a Queen fan store. That's the original inner sleeve this is. So on the picture of the band, of course. Thing from Wembley, I think, and also the back notes as well. And then you got a nice came. This came just like a standard new uh, paper line sleeve this does. That's pretty good actually. Also, it came in this as well, which is pretty. <laughs> I find it absolutely hilarious that it's come with this because most of the albums I've got from my local record store actually come in the same similar thing as this, really. So, and the final LP to show you, and the last item to show you in this video, of course, is a uh, jean. This is your yours for the take in the best of. So this is recent. This came out this year. This did. Um, Gene, nineties band, of course. Um, first album came in ninety five. They disbanded in the early in the mid early two thousands. They did. You know, this has come out recently because uh, Demon Music Group, one of the one of the labels, I think, who also did the do the issues for for albums a couple of years ago, released a box set. They did just recently with this sort of artwork on. They do this whole very coloured artwork. Um, obviously, just to reissue the albums as a box set and a, a B side live compilation as well, in between the first and second album, all that sort of thing. And also to capitalise on it, they released this compilation just to the public really as a mainstream release. Um, it's really good actually, I really, I don't listen, I never heard, well, I've, I've heard some Gene songs before in the 90s compilation, so it's again, a bit like Reef and Sleeper and everything else really. You know, you hear them on compilations really, you don't really just, you don't really search their albums really as much, or their discography really. Um, until now actually, well, you can't really find any proper Gene albums, it's the only sort of thing to get, to more closest to it. Um, also, it's coloured as well. It's actually, interestingly, um, I think, yeah. So, side, the first side is this colour of the vinyl. Second side's uh, this one, interestingly. So that's more like a yellowish, like a, a yellowish colour. The other one's like a light blue. So yeah, interesting. It's single sleeve, it is. So yeah, pretty good stuff. So that's Gene, yours for taking the best of. Thank you guys for watching. As always, see you for the next video and see you later.